going to tie for you a pregnant scud. The hook I'm using is a Tiemco 2457. This happens to be a size 14. The thread I'm using is Uni 17 knot, the Trico thread. That bead I have on there is a Lucent tungsten bead in, I believe it's two millimeters or two four. Place the thread on the hook and I move that bead to about mid body or mid shank of the hook. I'm going to take my thread and bring it back down into the bend of the hook. I'm going to build a little bit of a thread bump. I'm going to use that thread bump to lift my coctelion fibers, which are, are my antenna. The reason I'm using this thread is because it has no buildup. It goes translucent when you color it and also when it's uh, in the water. It's transparent. I've got some medium coctelion fibers, about 15 or 20. I like this stuff because it's rigid, translucent, and it's got barring in it. Adjust the length of my antenna. You can make them as long or short as you want. You'll see that little bump when you tie it down, it splays out those fibers. And it's nice because they taper out and they've got that barring and they're translucent. And they got a little shimmy to them also. Tie down my cochlear fibers and trim off the excess. Now I'm going to bring my thread back up to the front and I've got some 17 pound mono. I'm going to cut a piece that's anywhere from half inch to three quarters of a length and hold them in a pair of tweezers. Now most guys will take that mono and burn one end, melt one end, and then melt the other. And sometimes the eyes come out balanced, sometimes not. And so what I do is I just wave it through that flame, and at the same time it also picks up some of the soot, so I don't need to use a marker to blacken it out. But I'll just hold it there, wave it through the medium, middle portion, which is the warmest portion of the flame. And then I'll use those same tweezers to apply those eyes to right in the tie-in point for my coctelion and just lose a little bit of a figure eight. I don't do too many wraps because I know I'm going to coat it with the UV resin at the end. Now I'm going to bring my thread back up into the eye of the hook. And I've got a piece of latex rubber. I'm going to cut a taper into it so I don't get it so much of a build. Tie it in. Note how I stretch it out so I don't get that build up. And I'm bringing my thread, my bobbin, up to the front. I'm going to build up the body a little bit. I've got quite a bit of pressure right now. You see that little stretch? I stretched it out first, and then I'm going to wrap. Now I keep that tension on there. I want to build the body up a little bit, but I want to still have that taper at the back end. So I'm easing off the pressure right now. I'll bring it back underneath. I'll put a lot of pressure here, do a half a wrap, and then ease off on the pressure so I can build up again and bring it up to the eyes. But I also want to keep that taper so I don't go right behind the eyes. A little too thick, backed it off, now I'll tie off my latex rubber. The latex rubber, because of the wraps, give me some segmentation, but I actually get more wraps 
from the thread as I attach my legs underneath. And also the thread um, pulls up the, the die from the marker, which also helps you create segmentation. Now I'm going to take a piece of a single piece of ginger ostrich hurl and I'm going to fold it in half and attach it right underneath the eyes. And what we're going to we're going to do is called a pots weave. I learned this from Mike Tucker. Now it's possible to combine two pieces of ostrich hurl. I've done that in the past and I've actually, since I'm creating a loop, I've actually trapped um, UVI stub in there to give it a little bit of sparkle. But for right now we're just going to use the ostrich hurl. What you're looking for in the ostrich hurl is something with a really strong stem with really, really long hairs. And that's not as easy to find as you would think. The ginger, when they, when they dye the, when they bleach the ostrich hurl so they can color it, they have a tendency to burn it when they leave it in the color too long. Now I'm going to take this ostrich hurl and gather both ends of it and I'm going to twist it. And you know how you, when you're a kid you take your shoelaces and twist them and they knot up on you? Well, I'm going to use that to my advantage. First off, it splays out the, because of the twist, it splays out the hairs. And it also gives me a chance to really bundle up my fiber so I get a really dense legs on there. And I like that because it, what it does is that when it gets in the water, especially still water fishing, which I do a lot of, even a slight, mo slight movement in the water makes those legs move. Now, so I'll go around and then trap those legs underneath the body of the scud. And I'll just work my way down. See, I can make it as dense or undense depending on how much I let that baby knot. See, I'll lose some knotting up. I twist, continue to twist as I move, work my way down. Go around the ostrich hurl, release the tension on the ostrich hurl, let it knot up, and then bring my thread over the top. And see, when I do that thread over the top, when I go to hit it with my marker, the marker dies will gather in that thread and give me segmentation better defined segmentation. And just work my way to the back. Now I'm running out of uh, room on my ostrich hurl, so I just uh, extend it back out to the end of it. Once again, twist, splays out the hairs on my ostrich hurl. And continue wrapping those legs. I started to use this technique on a lot of my nymphs also. just for the forward section of the, the legs. Tram and tie off. Now basically my fly is tied, the tying portion of it, but we gotta jack around with it a little bit and make it a little prettier. I trim off my thread. Now I'm gonna take a bit of, wet my fingers with a bit of saliva and take that ostrich roll and push it down underneath. Now sometimes you, they don't go underneath really easily. They're stuck off to the side and all you need to do is take your bodkin and push those push those ostrich hurl down so it sits underneath the the body of the abdomen. Now this is a cadmium orange marker and you'll see it takes the color real well but it also gets more color in the thread sections.
thread wraps. Now brush it down. Now I got a little bit of UV resin. This is the uh, this is the uh, resin from Loon. I've been using this since they ever came since they came out with it. Now I'm dropping some UV resin on one side of the fly. Then I'll come and I'll show you. And I'll drop it in on the other side of the fly, and then I'll put a stripe of it down the middle on top. And what's nice about this UV resin is it flows evenly, so it it gives a almost a, a very even layer all the way through. It adds this UV resin protects the fly as well as gives it some translucency, obviously, and it makes this baby durable as all get out. Now I will push my UV resin into certain areas so I get that nice little curved top. Now since it's so thick, I'm going to use two different lamps. I've got a regular uh, uh, lamp, and then I'm going to turn around and use a uh, laser on it. It's really thick, so you really need to... My batteries are fresh in my flashlight, and then also my, the batteries are fresh in my laser. And that's basically my pregnant scud in orange. I'm going to brush out the legs a little bit, though, with the brush. Excuse me, that's the laser. I like this laser because it'll light a piece of paper from three feet away. Personally, it doesn't light up my scud. It'll light a match, excuse me, from three feet away. Brush out the legs. It's good to go.